The Javi is a national organization founded 12 years ago, dedicated to transforming structural and interpersonal violence through the expansion of hospital-based violence intervention programs. As a member organization, we host communities of practice with HVIPs across the country. We help stand up new HVIPs. We participate in advocacy efforts at the federal and state level. And we help shift narratives away from racist ideas about who is deserving of care by humanizing communities of color who are disproportionately impacted by violence. What makes HVIP special is the use of violence intervention specialists, also called credible messengers, who leverage their lived experiences to build trusting relationships with victims of violence. These specialists lived in the same communities as patients and focus on intensive case management, helping clients secure safe housing, employment, safety planning, and many other wraparound services that are customized to each patient. My name is Nate. I'm a Sacramento native and a father to three beautiful children. When I was 24 years old, I was shot three times in the back. For the past few years, I've been doing hospital-based violence intervention work. And what that work consists of is being a frontline worker, on the ground, working with trauma patients, going to see them bedside in the hospital, helping them navigate a difficult and often scary time in their lives. Today, I'm linking up with the man who helped me on my path to healing to talk about the importance of hospital-based violence intervention work. When I first met Nate, he had been shot. Uh, as an intervention specialist, I began to create his case plan uh, and start to walk through the resources he needed to get him to his healing. Over the course of several years, Nate and I created this special bond, uh, professionally and personally. And I'm proud to say that uh, through that work and through that bond, Nate became an intervention specialist himself. I think the key points to hospital-based violence intervention work uh, is uh, one, we're there at the beginning, right? Um, at that teachable moment, uh, two, we're serving as liaisons uh, for the patient and the family between doctors, nurses, and medical staff. Uh, three, that aftercare service, right? Uh, taking care of them afterwards and making sure they're connected to resources and appointments. And, and then four, mentorship, just making sure you're uh, a proven person on their side and, and helping to walk them through their journey to, to healing. I think those are the, the elements. Yeah. And I know if it, wasn't for programs like this, I wouldn't be here. So I just understand the importance of, of why they exist and, and how they need to operate. Not only you know, are these intervention programs, but they're, they're also preventative programs, right? You got, you got folks who are working with folks who are injured, but we're also showing family members and, and showing siblings and preventing uh, retaliation. Yeah, I definitely agree. You know, we're, we're, we're at the hospital, we're, we're at their homes. You know, we're at the schools, we're at appointments, you know, we're, we're giving them resources, making sure they don't go back and retaliate. Yeah, we definitely, we definitely on the front line. When I think about what my mom went through, you know, when I was shot and then having to come home and then her having to take care of me, staying off work to take care of me and, and, and the program coming around, you know, offering help. What was that like for you? How important was that like for you? In the beginning, honestly, I wasn't trying to hear it, you know, and I can only speak for myself personally, but something that stuck with me was the consistency. The fact that, you know, you didn't give up on me and you were there and you kept coming and kept coming. Um, no matter how many times I didn't answer the phone, how many times I didn't text you back, um, you were always there. And so that to me was the key, just being consistent and you being there and, and not giving up always made me feel like you've seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. And I think you raise a, a, another point. I think the importance of who does the work, you know, is key. Very key. Right? Random folks, you know, social workers who don't have backgrounds in community, who aren't from um, the, the same community, ha that don't have similar life experiences. Yeah, they, they don't have the understanding. Yeah. You know, the understanding is, is, is very key in the work, being able to relate to people and, and instead of pointing fingers like, yo, why were you doing that? You know, it was more like, well, how can I help you? Like, what do you need? Where, where are you trying to take your life and how can I get you there? You know, it's something that you said, 
been st stuck with me for for a long time is we're seed planters. See, yes, sir. You know, we might not be there to watch that tree grow, you know, but but we put that seed in the ground for it to produce, yes, sir. you know, all this other stuff. You know, like you 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 take an apple, you cut the apple in half, right? It'd be about five, six seeds in there. But if you plant that seed in the ground, how many apples are going to come from that tree? Trying to quantify community violence is is, is difficult. Uh, violence is a public health issue, right? And and uh, it stems from a, a much deeper rooted issue, right? Structural racism, um, uh, racial inequality and inequity, um, disenfranchisement. These things are built into the fabrics of our country, right? And we see them playing out throughout communities who aren't loved on and who aren't considered and who aren't cared for, right? So we think about the person causing violence when it's actually a system causing violence. That's why it's so necessary to have these programs out here in our communities. This is my life's work, man. This is hard work for me. Victory looks like, man, a, a community that, that can cope and deal with trauma, right? Can come and, and, and get the support they need, right? Be healed, um, not just percentages of success, but actually liberated, right? Victory looks like um, you. Victory looks like you, little bro. I mean, uh, someone who was injured um, and a client, then someone who um, worked for the program and supported them, and now doing great things in, in community, um, family, those types of things look like victory to me. And that's, that's what this work is about. What I see is that, you know, we're, we're working ourselves out of a job every day. Mm -hmm. To be able to just to show up at work and there be no violence or, or no injuries, that's, that's a victory. Yeah. Here's what we know. So few survivors report their experiences to law enforcement or use the criminal legal system. And yet hospitals, which are accessible to all people, are neutral places for survivors to enter and present their needs with an explicit focus on health and wellness. Hospitals who are successful at this work are engaged in meaningful reciprocal relationships. This is critical because we know that those who are closest to the problem are best equipped to solve it. We believe VOCA funding should be used to help build these hospital community partnerships to support the development of a robust victim services ecosystem. If you want to learn more about hospital-based violence intervention and opportunities to leverage federal and state resources to support this work in your community, visit our website at thehavi.org or follow us on Twitter at thehavi.org.